بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ہیلو اینڈ گڈ آفٹرنون وی ویلکم یو آل ان اندر آئی ٹریپل ای سیشن مائی نیم از راشد اینڈ آئی ایم ورکنگ ایز سینئر مینیجر ایڈمن اینڈ ٹریننگز ایٹ اے اینڈ جے ڈیپ ٹیک کنسلٹنٹس وہی اے اینڈ جے ڈیپ ٹیک کنسلٹنٹس آر لوکل پارٹنرس فار آئی ٹریپل ای کورنگ کورنگ پاکستان اور ٹرینر فار ٹو ڈے سیشن از مسٹر الیکس لیو یو پینگ ہو از آئی ٹریپل ایز مینیجر کلائنٹ سروسز فار ایشیا ریجن uh in the panel is i have my other colleagues from anj uh and today is in fact uh is the sixth session out of the series of eight sessions uh being scheduled by ieee and anj deftech consultants for pakistani researchers and the topic of today's session is publishing your research and innovation with ieee choices and procedures now without wasting any much time i am inviting mr alex to start the session with his presentation and the live demonstration afterwards so let me give you the host rights alex and then thank you mr rashid thank you mr rashid um good afternoon everyone thank you so much for taking your time joining another session organized by ang and i triple e And thank you so much for joining after your lunch. I hope everybody had a good lunch. Uh, the topic for today is publishing your research and innovation with IEEE. Of course, for this session, we are focusing on choices and procedures. Um, if you have attended the session, which we, organ uh, which we conducted um, a few weeks earlier uh, regarding our manuscript preparation, uh, I pretty much touch a little bit on some of the content that I'm going to share today. You might feel in the beginning, especially there are some repeated content, but I'm repeating for certain purpose. So the focus for today is choices and procedures. The, by choices, we are talking about what type of publications are you going to publish with IEEE. So for example, if we have a researcher who is writing a book, Can you publish with IEEE? Well, the answer is a yes and no. Yes, IEEE does publish book, but to be honest, if you are a beginning researcher, for example, you are a master or PhD students, or you are a faculty member who is new in research, we will encourage you to start publishing journal paper or conference paper in the first place, instead of books. Um, That's the other choices. So without further ado, again, this part is just repeating for some of us which are not familiar with IEEE or if you're not coming from a technical perspective, this is some fundamental information you need to know. And why do you need to know this is, if you want to publish with IEEE, at least you have to know what IEEE does what IEEE is about. Yes, IEEE published journals and conferences, but what types of journals and conferences? Does it publish content in law? Does it publish content in finance? Does it publish content in medicine? Does it publish content in history and social studies? So the background is very important. And in fact, the reason why I'm highlighting this is Next time, whether you're going to publish with IEEE or any publisher or any journal, before you jump into the journal, look at who is behind the journal. Who is the publisher? Is it an established publisher? What does the, the publishers focus on? Does it focus on engineering, computer science, social studies, medicine? You need to find not only the journals that specialize in your subject area, but hopefully the organization or the publishing house behind it that is also strong on that. That will ensure you are going through a fair, a fair process and you are put among researchers and remember readers that are focusing on that specific areas because publishing is not for you. Publishing is not about you, it's about presenting your research to your readers. So you have to make sure you are reaching out to the appropriate reader group that does read the type of content that 
that's related to your research. So if you talk about IEEE, we are currently the world's largest technical membership association. Again, please do not be misled by the title, by the name. The name is Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers, but if you search in IEEE Explore Digital Library, you will realize that it's published much more than just electrical and electronics. Pretty much anything that has to do STEM education, science, technology, medicine, uh, engineering, you know, this kind of subjects. If you are studying our history, if you are studying our economics, if you are studying our social science, you may say, hey, Alex, um, which means actually doesn't publish those content, is it? Well, why don't you try your keywords? The subject keywords in IEEE Explore, you will realize nowadays multidisciplinary research is very common. You will find a lot of publications. For example, artificial intelligence is nowadays heavily used in social studies. Are you aware of that? Machine learning is heavily used in finance. So it's not just about do you have this, do you have that? Please use the platform to use the keyword that you, that you are interest, uh, interested in or you are working on. By keyword, I'm not talking about keyword like finance, social studies. Those are not keywords. Keywords means a specialized, a specific words that describe the specific research topic of a certain research, not the generic terms, physics, mathematics, science. No, those are not keywords, right? Use a specific keyword in IEEE e Explore. You will find some publications that might be related to you. And this is our overview. Again, our focus is on the journals and conferences. Qualities of IEEE journals are very good. Top journals. It's a double-edged sword, which means if you publish in those journals, it shows you are a good researcher. But on the other side, because they are top, well-known journals, which means they are highly competitive. If your paper is rejected, please don't feel frustrated. Please don't you know, go around and ask, hey, my paper is totally correct. Why is my paper rejected? This is like, I'm constantly using this analogy. I want to apply to Harvard University. Do you see I, I can get in? I know I can't. Yes, I did have a good bachelor degree, but everybody applies to Harvard University, have a good research, have a good bachelor degree. Everyone is top student. They are looking for the best out of the best. The same for IEEE journals. So when you submit to IEEE journals, be prepared for the impact. If your paper is accepted, congratulations. It shows the impact of your research. If your paper is rejected, please don't be frustrated. You can always try another journal or you can choose some of the conferences. By talking of that, we have a lot of conferences as well. Every year, we have a lot of conferences. Publishing choices. Journals, conferences, those are the two major types of publications we will recommend. I believe I have gone through this and now I'm repeating. Journal articles, fully developed, final findings. Conference articles, preliminary results, informal feedback, typically shorter than journal articles. And for IEEE, we have both of them. IEEE has Journals, so if you like to publish your paper as a journal, yes, we have over 190. If you add on the open access journals, it's over 200 journals. If you like to publish in a conference, we have conference publications as well. We have conference being organized every year and a lot of them actually are happening in Pakistan as well. Now, your paper is not for you. We have to fully understand this so that it helps us in, term, in writing, helps us in formatting the paper. It also helps us in presenting our research result because your audience will include the editors and reviewers. The editors and reviewers are like teachers. So for example, 
they will check whether, of course, whether your research is valid, whether it's authentic, whether it's something that is useful. Does that mean that as long as my research method is correct, my results is correct, everything is correct, my paper is accepted? No, it doesn't work like that. It's different from passing the exam score. Let's say I, as long as I get 100%, I will be the top student. No, that's not the case for journals. So what they will do is obviously they will look for a pro, a original materials, provides valid methods, illustrations and everything. Everything has to be accurate to move into the next step. What is the next step? The next step is your research content has to be in appropriate scope or level with the journal. And I know, I know this is a very broad concept. I can illustrate this using a simple example. Now, imagine I want to submit to one of the IEEE transactions. IEEE transactions are antenna and propagation. This journal focus on antenna, satellite communications, signal processing. So let's say I'm working on antenna. How do I know whether my current research level is on par of what that journal is looking for? Very simple. Spend some time, read the existing publications from this journal that are related to your research. So for example, I found, let's say 50 or 60 papers, 60 papers from this journal that is closely related to my research. Not any paper, you have to find the paper that is closely related to your research from this journal. Then you read these 60 papers. You ask yourself, is my research on par or similar of a similar level in terms of importance, in terms of impact? in terms of uh, um, achievement of the existing published articles that has been published by this journal. If you think, yes, you know what? My research is even better than that. And my research in question, my research topic is even more important than that. Uh, and in fact, those papers are so easy, I can spend you know, half an hour to finish the whole paper. Uh, and I understand what the paper is talking about. Then congratulations, you are working on an important research problem. And in fact, your research level is higher than those published papers. It's very safe for you to submit your journal, sorry, submit your paper to this journal because you know you have the confidence that you have something that is appropriate in terms of scope and level of what the journal is looking for. Now you notice in order for you to achieve this, in order for you to have a self evaluation and analysis and understanding of your research level, comparing to the existing published research articles, you need to spend a lot of time reading others publications. From that particular journal, and those publications has to be related to your research area. So next time, instead of asking everyone, asking your supervisor, asking your seniors, hey, John, which journal should I submit to? What's the best journal for me to submit to? Instead of asking everybody else about that question, ask yourself that question. How many papers have you read? If you're interested in journal A, how many papers have you read that has published in journal A? One, two, 20, 30. If you have read enough, you will be able to make an appropriate understanding and self-evaluation in terms of scope and level. So this is very important. This whole slide, yes, is talking about audience, but in fact, it's talking about ourselves. We have to understand ourselves, what kind of impact, what kind of research we are working out. Now, if you are first year master or PhD students, this is very weak for you because we are just starting this. But if this is the second year, the third year, or if you are already a faculty, you should be doing this day in and day out. You should be reading publications as newspapers. Every morning you are reading a newspaper. Well, every morning you should be reading one or two publications. 
you may not need to read the full content, but at least, at least the abstracts, the methodologies and results analysis of that. Once you form the habit of read, reading, that will help you to build the confidence of understanding what the current research is talking about. And when you're writing, that confidence will also help you in terms of your pre presentation, in terms of your writing, in terms of your formatting of your content so that you can write or present your research in the appropriate level, in the appropriate format with the materials that you have derived from your research. Review process is important. So what is going to happen is once your paper is coming in, the editor-in-chief will get the paper, but he's not going to look into the details. The only thing he's going to check is whether this paper is on the subject area of this journal. What do I mean by that? For example, my research is on Internet of Things, and I'm submitting a journal that actually publish a lot on smart grid. You know, looks like power and energy. But it turns out my research on internal things is exactly related to smart grid because my research is talking about sensors in IoT communications that are applied in electrical systems, which is related to smart grid. So in that case, the editor says, hmm, so Alex paper is relevant to my journal, but he's not going to check the content. You know, whether the research is in a good level, whether the research is accurate, he's not going to do that. What's going to happen is this paper, my paper will be assigned with an associate editor and the associate editor will look out for reviewers. The reviewers has to be someone who is also working on either internal things or on sensors or on smart grid that is related to internal things or sensors. So it, Reviewers has to be someone who is related, who has the basic understanding or even better, who is someone who is studying or researching, in fact, researching on the same subject area. That ensures the reviewer will be able to understand what exactly you are talking about. The reviewers cannot be someone who is studying finance, isn't it? The finance uh, lecturer is going to review a paper on smart grid. That's never going to happen. So the reviewers will have check your paper, review your paper, send the comments back to the editors. The editors, based on a the few reviewers, at least two, so most of the time it's between three to four, based on the reviewers' comments, then they will decide whether your paper will be accepted, rejected, or if your paper is still valid, but you need to make some adjustment or corrections or amendment. So that's what we call revise and resubmit. And then they will inform you the final decision, whether your paper will be accepted or rejected. So as you can see, the reviewers plays a critical role. When you are writing a paper, you have to clearly report or present what exactly your subject area is about, as specific as possible. And of course, we get rejections. Why they are rejected? You will see the first one, it's not talking about your research quality. It's talking about whether your content is a fit for the publication. This goes back to the first line here. That's appropriate in terms of scope and level for the journal. Not for you. Not talking about accurate or not, but whether it's a good fit, right? And then the ser if, of course, if that's serious, problem in terms of research, whether your results is not accurate, or in fact, there are some um, fabrications in terms of your research procedures, then of course, your, your, your paper has to be rejected. It's poorly written, your English is not that good, then unfortunately, the paper will be rejected. It does not address a big enough problem. Again, remember, I was spending a lot of time telling you, you have to read the journal to understand the level of the journal. If you are working on a minor problem, but you are submitting to a big journal, well, for the journal's editors and reviewers, they were saying that your research is valid, but it's not a big enough problem for this particular area of research. You should never 
you should never, never publish some work that has been done before, that has been published before. You publish a journal, you publish a paper in one place, and then you submit the same paper to a second place, pretending this is something new. Trust me, we are talking about internet. Things can be found. Please do not publish content that has been published before. Again, this is repeated. The quality is not good enough for the journal. We're not saying your research is not good. It's just that it's a mismatch between your research and the journal. All right. I think I'll quickly go through. I'll talk about it in our previous sessions. Plagiarism. Please don't just copy and paste. You know, don't. don't if it's if it's us, say it, proudly say it, this is from you know my research. But if it's not from us. We can paraphrase, which means we can present the same idea, but we have to include a citation and tell other people that this idea is from, for example, John's publication in 2009. It's not from Alex, it's not from me, it's from John's publication in 2009, right? Plagiarism. Duplication, if you have one paper, please submit to one venue. That's it. Do not do duplication. Uh, do not publish anything that has been published before. So let's quickly go through that. So we talk about the choices. Now, before we move on to the next step, let me show you the differences about a journal paper and a conference paper. I'm not sure how many of us has actually spent time to read. Again, if you are an undergraduate student, today's session might be a little bit heavy because a lot of time, you know, I'm talking about reading, reading, reading. Um, so you know, ask yourself, how many papers have you been reading? If not, maybe you want to start with reading first. Don't think about writing a paper, publishing a paper. No, don't worry about that. Let's start with reading. Now, I'm showing you a journal, sorry, a conference paper. As you can see, it has six pages, right? Is this a lot? It's not. If you compare to a journal, conference articles are much shorter. And if we scroll down, we have the title, we have the authors, author information, sorry, a list of keywords, and an abstract. The abstract is already one paragraph, it's pretty short. And it will always start with the introduction to introduce your readers the background, what my research is about. And microgrid control strategy, again, this is something about the background. Now it leads into further details, which in different sections, unit control scheme, as you can see, more technical details come in. Mathematical expressions, functions, diagrams, scheme, figures. As you can see, we are talking about data points here, right? All these data points, the designs, and case studies. There is a discussion of case study because remember we are talking about conference. Conference papers are usually written while you are still doing the research. So in this case, you do you may not have the final research methodologies fixed yet. So you can use some case studies whether yours, most likely it's yours during your experiments or simulations or designs, right? So you have some diagrams, you have some achievement, some events and specifically identify how the observations are being done and present them in a network, oh, sorry, in a diagram, right? Different diagram, as you can see. And of course, all these diagram has to be explained. And that's why if you refer to the discussions, as you can see here, BSS active and reactive power injectors are reported in figure six. So when your reader is reading this figure six, they will come back to figure six. Oh, this is the figure and they are talking about BSS by right, the different values. And they refer to the different values in the diagram. So this is how they can cross read your text together with your diagrams. And of course, more details are being brought in and conclusions, right? It looks like quite smooth. Six page is really not that much for you to report a lot of things. If you add in the diagrams, if you add in the discussions and the figures, you know, you, you don't have that much space and the conclusion is pretty straightforward. Always end it with a reference list. So this is a conference paper. A general conference paper yearly is between four to six pages. I know in our first session, 
when I explain the difference between a journal paper and conference, and what I'm saying, typically conference papers are shorter. I believe a lot of us are thinking, hey, you know, shorter means it's easier to write. But if you ask me, I really do not think so because number one, shorter also means you have less number of pages, less space for you to utilize. Yet, you still need to have your introduction. You still need to report your research methods and your research results and the discussions. So in that case, you really have to write in a very concise, solid format to report your findings. So this is a conference paper. So if you look at another paper, which is a journal paper, this is a journal paper. It's published in IEEE Transactions on Pattern Analysis and Machine Intelligence. And it has 15 pages, more than double of that conference paper, right? But most of the journal paper actually is, uh, the range is actually between eight to 12 pages. 15 is a long. I purposely chose a long paper because this paper has a lot of details. Title, author information, not to mention abstract itself is longer. Remember, now we are, we are talking about double column, right? Previously in journals is a single column. Abstract is wrong. Introduction, and in introduction, you need more details because of this, uh, the nature of the study is talking about image processing and uh, pattern recognition. So in that case, they need to have a lot of figures. In the whole part is introduction and remember, and he's split the introduction to the literature review. Introduction is purely for fundamental information. Literature review is bringing in what the current research is about. And his literature review section is quite some length as well, as you can see, with details. In, step, in the third component is talking about his architecture, which means his research methods, his research proposal. Explanation of the fundamental um, series, how it's being done, the codings and decoding variant, the discussions and the trainings, because we're talking about machine learnings, right? So learning tables, the figures and frequencies, the parameters used for the trainings, the analysis. And we're not even coming to the results yet. Benchmarking is talking about the uh, comparisons, evaluations and all that. And we are just on page nine. Right, six more pages to go. Road scenario segment, the different scenarios, discussions. Again, uh, it's longer because of some of the images. And this is where they report the comparisons. As you can see, the figures. And once, remember what I was sharing you in the earlier sessions, the moment you are talking about figures, and if you want to list down numerical values like, like this, you need to have a quite a lengthy discussion, explanation, or comparison to let the users know what is the use of these numbers. What's the impact? What does these numbers mean? Does it mean a better accuracy, an improvement in efficiency? You know, things like that. And more diagrams tables, figures, then there's a discussion and future work, right? They split, and this discussion is based on the analysis and the explanations of what he has been doing for all the reporting his feed, reporting his numerical values, quantitative values, discussions and future work. This, this is pretty much the leading to the conclusion portion, right? Then it's the reference list because it's a journal, Journal paper usually is a lot of work. That's why, as you can see, the reference list is longer as well, 69, 69 references. So this is a journal paper. It's longer. Is it easy to write? No, I don't think so. Because again, longer means you have more content to write, right? Comparing to journals or comparing to conferences. Yes, you have more space, but it also means you have more content to write. And not to mention to this, especially when it comes to quantitative, quantitative values and discussions that will lead to another uh, dimensions as well. So this is a journal paper, right? The next thing I would like to share with you is on the procedures. I believe I have 
Let me go through this portion. <coughs> Submissions, submission procedure. It's pretty straightforward. Submit your paper, identify the journal, identify the conference, then submit your paper. So the keyword is how to identify the journals, how to identify the conferences. And this is what I'm going to show you. But before I do that, I'll just quickly run through the rest. In the journals, every journal's page, there's always this submit manuscript as I'm going to show you. So all you have to do is just click on this. It will bring you to the submission page. Open access, we have a dedicated website for this. And I will actually recommend you to visit this website, which is IEEE Author Center for more information. Again, now is the time for you, for me to show you this portion. Just give me one minute. We should always start with IEEE Explore because this is where your paper will end up with. And this is where our literature review will start with. For example, as, as I'm sharing Internet of Things, this is my topic or IOT, right? <clears throat> this is the first concept. And sensor. Add a truncation, sensor sensing. I will do a search. Let's say I'm, my research is on internal scenes and sensors. I will be able to find uh, select Southern publications. I want to submit to a journal, right? I will select on journal, click on apply. I will find out which journal published the most on this. On the left hand side, we have publication title. I attribute journals of, I attribute internal scenes journal. I should be access, I should be census journal. So do you know which journal submit? Well, at least some of these, right? One of these. So let's say I'm interested in internal things journal. So click on apply. So now I'm finding all the papers that are published on internal, IEEE internal things and related to IOT and sensors. And bear in mind, my research is something that is related to smart grid. Again, I will do a search on smart grid. <clears throat> I will find 36 papers, which means this journal has published 36 papers that are related to internal things, sensors, and smart grid. If my research is on these subjects, can I submit to this journal? Well, it looks like can because they already published. But the next question I'm going to ask is, is my paper good enough for this journal? How can, can you evaluate? Well, you just open the PDF and read these papers. You read about these, you can read the abstracts. If I say, okay, the first one is related, the second one, uh, not related to me and the third one, yes, it's related. So I will read those papers that are relevant to my research. I can just ask myself, is this difficult? Is this high, in a higher level, a more important problem? It's like, you know, if you are studying in high school, you are given a university textbook and you, you wonder, can I go to university? Well, read the textbook. If you understand the textbook, Wow, you are brilliant students. I'm sure you can get into a university. If you read the university textbook, you realize you are reading like a foreign language. You have no clue what he's talking about. Well, I would rather encourage you to stay in high school and revise what you have done. Because even if you don't understand the whole content, but at least some of it, isn't it? Because your research is on the same topic. You should somehow understand some of this. So this will give you understanding of your research level comparing to this journal's level. And if you find out, well, it looks like, you know, I understand what this article is about. It looks like their research is pretty much on par of what I'm doing. I have the confidence that my research is, you know, what this journal is about. Well, all you have to do is click on the journal's name. And did you see this submit manuscript? That's it, submit. You will be brought to a website. All you have to do is create an account. If you have an ORCID ID, you can use your ORCID ID. If you don't have it, register for account. You can log into the platform 
and you will be able to log in and submit your paper. That's it. Follow the process. Submitting to a journal is very straightforward. How about for conferences? You can repeat the same procedure. So if I may go back to my search results. So instead of looking for journals, I will be looking for conferences. Apply. And we see what conferences are publishing the most, right? Publication, you do the same process as what you are doing. The only difference is you will realize this, these journals are happening in the past, 2013, 2019. You can't travel to the past, isn't it? <laughs> There's no time machine invented yet. So for example, I realized this, what forum on internal scene, this looks interesting. Well, you might wonder, how about, this year or next year, is there the same word conference on internal scenes that is going to happen this year or next year? Maybe I can join that conference, isn't it? So now what you need to do is find out what conferences are available. You come to IEEE.org and you look for conferences. This is the conferences, right? Upcoming conferences. And search, is it? Search for what forums are internal scenes. Do a search. Do you have it? Oops, seems like it's not happening. But since we are interested in internal scenes, we can do a search on internal scenes, isn't it? Then we have some conferences. As you can see, we have 119 conferences. This is happening this month. It's happening in Indonesia. Let's take a look at this. Right, just click on it and this description, and you find out this conference website. Click on it, you are brought to this page. Now, every conference website is important because they have this call for paper, topics. And they also have some information for authors, for example, preparing final, final manuscript. Let's look at call for papers because it will tell you what topics they're working on, right? So this conference, this conference will provide, paper submission is here. If you want to submit your paper, follow the instructions, right? They have a dedicated website. You have to create an email address, set a password, then you log in to submit. You notice this is different from the journals. Paper submission guidelines, publications, publication policies, important dates. Final paper submission. Can I still submit my paper? Oops, no, because I missed the deadline, isn't it? So always make sure you check the deadlines. And if you want to know more about how to prepare your paper, they have a section on preparing final, final manuscript. They have a language and you have a template available as well, right? You can download the template. And uh, in, um, informations, minimum PDF requirement, must have all these characteristics. So at least you know how you should format the papers, right? All the information you need to know is here. Always come to the conference website, call for papers, prepare your manuscript, that's it. Follow the instructions. So that's a quick overview of the submission uh, procedures. So once you are okay with this, you are get you're familiar, you do it once or twice, then you will understand how it works. All right, so that's the last bit I would like to share. So uh, now let's look at um, whether we have some Q and A's or questions from our participants. Yes, Alex, there are three questions which are lying for you and I have noted down three more. I will uh, ask after you reply these. Sure, thank you. Allow me to go through them one by one. The first one is, can an individual write, review papers and then submit as a conference article, you have to check with the conference committee. And that is not a common practice because generally conference articles will be looking for original research. Original research. All right, I hope, I think this is answered. The next question, how is the basic difference between transaction and journal? You can treat them as no difference because 
IEEE is a society publisher. In the past, in along the history, the society publishers likes to use the word transaction because we are talking about communications within the societies. Journal is a much commonly used names. In terms of the individual articles that we should concern, whether the title is called transaction or journal, there's no difference, right? So you don't have to worry about that. How to select journals according to the whole content of the paper? I believe I spent the whole session answering this question. The work is not about online system. The work is about you. Do you know what your research is about? Do you know about your literature review? We are not able to pay the conference fee due to international currency exchange policy. Please contact the conference organizers. I do not have any information on this, unfortunately. What's the accept? Okay. okay, there's one more, yes, sorry. sorry. We do not have acceptance ratio as of now. I I I don't know any acceptance ratio. I I do not think I do not know why you should concern about that. You know, um, again, it's about you. If you have done the process of you know reading enough, um, understanding another paper, other pub other researchers' publications and seek your supervisors um, advice before you submitting to the journals. Focus on your paper. Yeah. Discount for developed countries. I don't know what discount you are talking about. If it's a conference, please refer to the conference website. If you are talking about discount for uh, journals, generally journals, you don't have to pay unless you want to submit as open access. There are discount for open access, but uh, I mean, you will find more information if you are at that stage. So do you have a paper now? Are you going to publish? Are you going to publish open access? If your answer to all these three questions are yes, then I'm sure you will be able to find the information. If you don't have a paper, you don't have a paper to publish, you don't intend to publish as open access, then you don't have to worry about this because you don't have to pay anything. How about people of mathematics? IEEE access requires subscription. Sorry, IEEE explore access. If you want to access to IEEE explore, yes, it requires subscription, so you should talk to your library, ask your library to subscribe IEEE Explore. Then you are able to read the articles. It doesn't matter what subjects you are talking about, it's whether your library has the subscription. Okay, Alex. So uh, let me ask you the question which I have noted down during the session. Uh, the first question is, uh, what is the word limit of conference article and when should one start preparing for the article? Thank you. That's a good question. In terms of what limit, just now I have shown the conference website. It's not about the wording. It's about the format. For example, the conference says we only accept or we require our paper to be between four to six pages, double column, um, font size 11, for example, for example, then while you are writing, you just format your paper according to double column, according to the template, format mm -hmm. your font size to be 11, then you make your limits to six pages. Different conferences has different requirements. You don't need to remember whether what's the word limit. When should one start preparing for the article? I'll, I would recommend you should preparing for your paper along with your research. If you attended my earlier sessions, I've been telling you, we are doing the literature review. You should be doing some sort of uh, drafting an outline when you, are, when you are doing the literature review and all those will serve as a skeleton for you to prepare your paper. Then you can start preparing the articles. 
along the way, then you can find out conferences, then, and you know, you can aim for the conference you want to submit to. Thanks. Okay. I have submitted a paper to a relevant journal and it's been more than a year. It's been uh, rejected many times now. Initially, it came with some review reports and I corrected it. Last three rejections didn't add any review. They just rejected it. Can you tell me why can this be? Well, if your paper is rejected in the first time, which means the editor straight away told you, clearly told you your paper is rejected. You can take the paper back and make the correction, but I would not recommend you submit to the same paper. You should try, a, uh, sorry, the same journal. You should try it as a different journal. They already told you it's rejected. It's not, now there's a difference between Rejection and sometimes the reviewer will say, okay, you need to review you, your paper or revise your paper. If you are told to revise your paper, then yes, you can take back, you can do the correction and, and send it back. But your paper is rejected. Then why do you submit to it again? It's not going to work like that. If it's rejected for the first time, you take it back, do your corrections, send to a different journal. Okay. I think that answers the question. Yes, thank you, Alex. And the last question is was actually uh, the first question which was uh, which, which appeared in our Q and A uh, before the session started. Uh, uh, Doctor Riaz, I think, has asked about uh, the IEEE. Uh, actually, he has asked who is organizing this uh, session. Is it IEEE USA? Uh, and we uh, ask him what is uh, the intention of uh, right, asking right. this question. Okay, then he uh, explained it. He told us that I basically added it in my CV, mm -hmm. uh, IEEE training organized by, and then I have to set there who uh, has organized. I see. Um, may I ask, Mr. Rush, is it common to add this kind of training sessions into the CV? Yes, I think if they are uh, intention is their intention is to add the CV, they can uh, write there an online training session organized by IEEE. Okay. I see. Uh, yes. Uh, let me explain it, it myself that Dr. Ryas, uh, IEEE headquarters is definitely in USA, uh, New Jersey. Uh, but IEEE has their regional offices in uh, different parts of the world, okay? Uh, Sir Alex is in uh, Singapore, okay? Uh, and we are in Pakistan and we have our uh, colleagues in different countries, okay? Uh, but the headquarters is always in uh, US and New Jersey, okay? So you can uh, just write you can just write there that this uh, online session I have attended and this was this was organized by IEEE just. Yeah, thank you. Okay, Alex, uh, I think uh, we have done. And uh, at the end, again, I would like to thank all of the attendees, panelists, and especially to Mr. Alex Liu uh, for sparing his time for us and for our researchers uh, and for conveying uh, such a fruitful uh, information. Uh, and uh, for the audience, our next session uh, will be on the 23rd of November, the same month. Okay, uh, regarding the uh, recording of this session, uh, please note that the recording link will be sent to you in two or three days uh, and the certificates will be sent within uh, a week's time, uh, more than a week's time, seven to ten days. Okay, uh, and we hope to uh, see you all in the next session and the uh, topic of the next session uh, will be IEEE Explore Digital Library. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you very much, Alex. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Usman Javed. Thank you very much, all the attendees. Uh, so see you in the next session. Stay blessed, stay safe, take care. Goodbye and Allah Hafiz. Thank you. Goodbye, everyone. Take care.